Hello friends. Today I'm going to talk some more about branding. And this topic actually comes up from a workshop I did a few days back, a two-day workshop, where on one day we talked about creativity and the importance of a brand. And on the second day, we talked about design and how design can help enhance and make the brand stronger. I found that a very interesting topic. And the more I researched and the more I prepared for that workshop, I found that this is something that most brands really should actually foray into. And with the kind permission of the company and the brand that I did this workshop for, I am today offering a 25, 30 minute synopsis, so to say, of that workshop. Yes, that workshop was a full day workshop. And the feedback I got from the company, the brand manager, and the participants is that they do intend to focus very strongly on creating design as an important element or contributor to their brand becoming great and more powerful. So uh, when this topic came up, I decided to ask them if I can use some of my research and what I did with them without naming them or without offering some of the solutions I give them, some of the recommendations I gave them to the public at large. And they were kind enough to allow me to do this episode. This episode has been vetted by them because as I said, uh, this content that I'm going to present today is a synopsis of what I did for their workshop, for which I got paid. And trust me, they were good paymasters. And therefore, it's going to be something where I don't give out data of what was created specially for them. Having given you this background, let us start talking about how a brand can become great using design as an element. Let me start sharing my screen and get to it straight away so that we can take this forward. So let's start sharing my screen. Here you go. So the topic I have, the name I've given to this topic is great branding by design how you can use design to make your brand great. So we've talked in a previous, in a previous episode of the brand's distinguishable identity. And what are the identifiers that form a brand? There is logo, there is a name, there is a tagline that you very often create for your brand. There is distinct packaging that you will create for your brand. And at that time, I'd given examples, distinct packaging. I thought, I think we talked about Tiffany's <laughs> and the various things. So these are the standard identifiers. But these identifiers are not enough to make a great brand. There is more than this that goes into making a brand great. So that's something which identifies the product or services that you offer in a distinguishable manner. Beyond these four identifiers, this is going to be your biggest identifier. I think we've talked about this. So I'm not going to dwell too much on it. And to surmise what I would say is that whenever people get a certain gut feeling when they think about you, that is when you can say you are a good brand. So 
the gut feeling is very critical and that gut feeling should come instantaneously whenever they think about you. Okay. So, and one thing is for sure, and I'm sure you've noticed in your life, is that great and smart designs create that gut feeling and enhance the gut feeling beyond other factors, trust, quality, everything else matters. But when you see great and smart design, that gut feeling is enhanced. And if not existing, it creates that feeling of greatness for your brand. So let us assume and let us look at brand and design as being inseparable. They have to go hand in hand for a brand to become great. And when people get great experiences with your design, that's when you have, what you can say, achieved greatness. And that experience, that super experience that people get with your design enhances the status and the value of your brand. Okay, so it's not just about a great design being a great product looking good or it is an overall experience and this experience enhances the status and value of your brand, making you go from just being a brand to being a great brand. So brand and design are correlated disciplines when it comes to looking at this space. Okay. And integrate your brand and designs. Once they are integrated, you are achieving greatness. Like if you think of Apple today, you think of certain well-designed design that is of utility and useful value that comes to mind. And you will see that at least up to today, Apple has always lived up to your expectations about what to expect from an Apple product. Whether it's the phone, whether it was the iPod, whether it is your iPad, laptop, whatever it is that you use with Apple, there are certain design norms. There are certain design expectations that come to mind. And this is, this is what Apple has created. Their value and their status and their uniqueness about Apple being a brand. Think BMW, their designs are so unique that even if the logo is missing on the car, you will identify that car at once as a BMW. This is the strength of integrating your brand and designs. There are some brands which use the logo or name as a design element. Okay, Like if you think of Rolex or Mont Blanc, the Rolex crown is there on the product in multiple ways, but which at once create a design element. Or take Mont Blanc. Every single product, not only their pens, even their jewelry, their cufflinks, their pendants, they have that Mont Blanc logo somehow ingrained as a part of the design element. Take LVMH. There are so many. Okay, so that LV, you have a belt with LV, you have a shoe with LV, you have bags with LV, and the minute you see that, you see that you know what brand it is, and you identify certain values to that product because that brand is carrying values. And some create a unique design form, okay, which is not really directly connected with the logo or anything. Say Versace. Just that simple border line of that zigzags coming up, you will say, oh, this is a message. So there are brand and design are correlated. And that correlation should be such that it enhances the status and value of your brand, making you a great brand. So now that we've talked of great design and how it helps enhance the brand. What are the things that great designers should be doing? The great designers that you would normally find create an emotional bond 
with the people and the consumers. Okay, basically through their designs, through what they create, they create an emotional bond with people and the consumers. And great designers when designing a product or anything, they will get the essence of the brand philosophy and try to live up to it in all the product designs that they make. Immaterial of what product it is. You will find Versace in various things in clothes, and, but they have a trend. You will have Burberry. And the minute you see those particular checks, you will know that it's a Burberry or an imitation of the Burberry. Imitation is one of the flattery. Uh, we say imitation is the best form of flattery. But I beg to defer on that. That's a separate topic. We are not talking about that right now. But designers should be able to get the essence of the brand philosophy and live up to it in all their product designs. Designers need to ask questions about the product, about the service that they are offering. And designers within the product that they create and design should be able to find solutions. There is no point in designing a fantastic product if it does not offer solutions, if it does not address and make easier the life of the consumer. And they will question initial assumptions. Is the assumption that we have made about this product right? And does my design cater to those assumptions? They will question the very need for the product. If those assumptions and product don't match consumer requirements and do not offer solutions that are usable by the consumer, that design is worthless. So once they have studied the assumptions, once they have decided whether there is a need for a product or not, it is then that they start creating a design. And that design will create a concept, a solution that offers the consumer the best use of the product. So to successfully use design to create a grand brand, what are the things? That brand, that company should strategize the design process from the start. That whole process of designing and creating product has to be strategized and the strategy has to be defined before you start designing. And you need to integrate design in the operational process of the company to drive innovation and create solutions. As I just said, creating a product that does not offer solutions to the needs of the consumer, to then that product is worthless. That product is not useful for the consumer, that product is worthless. So you need to integrate design into the operational process because then design itself will also drive innovation and that design will always be focused on creating solutions. And to do this, you need to involve designers right from the beginning of the product. Involve them in the decision-making process of the product. I know when I used to run my business, I used to have my designers sitting on meetings with consumers to understand what the consumer needs. And once they understand what the consumer needs, it is then that the design process is going to offer product. They will be able to design product that will offer solutions for what the consumer needs. So involve the designers right from the beginning and involve them in the decision-making process of that product. So when they are there from the beginning, they understand the challenges the consumer is facing. They understand the wants and needs of the consumer. And then they will design a product that is going to offer the consumer solutions to their challenges. And I have seen so often that most companies do not have this, but you need to have a chief design officer. Just like you have a CEO, a CIO, uh, all those CXOs, one of the X has to be design. 
So you need a chief design officer. And in line with what we are talking about, and in line, and this I have taken special permission to use from the company I did the workshop for, a merchandiser is not your CDO. The CDO has a different job profile than what the merchandiser has. So, in fact, this company told me, oh, but we have a merchandiser and she heads the process, design process and the design of various categories of product. No, that's not good enough. That may be good enough at the B2C level. They said they've been successfully doing it. But now that they are branding, a merchandiser is not enough. You need a chief design officer. So if you're thinking of seriously branding and creating a great brand, make sure that you appoint and have a CDO in place. That CDO is going to make sure that your design and your design team is something that enhances the value of the brand and makes you a brand going from good to great. What are the traits of a designer? First thing very important to remember is do not over design. I have seen very often people tend to over design. So a design that is too busy, that is too complicated, is not something that makes the consumer comfortable. So don't over design. Make your design simple, elegant, well-conceived and authentic. It has to be original. It has to be authentic. Okay. Most designers say, I want to be different. No, that should not be your goal. Don't just aim at being different. Aim at being authentic, as we just said, and better. You create better and more useful product than what is already available today. That makes you a great designer. Use design as a tool to reinvent the brand for whom you are designing. <clears throat> Every brand needs to <clears throat> constantly reinvent itself, needs to constantly update itself. Use design as a tool, a very powerful tool to constantly reinvent the brand and use design as a differentiator. Make sure that your design results in a product that differentiates you and gives you a competitive advantage over all the other players in the same space. So brands and designs. Now, what is brand? A brand, as I just said, constantly needs to update itself and it needs to be fluid. There are various ways to do it. One of the most common ways I will tell you, or one of the most common things I have noticed when which can be a deep study in itself is how Google tweaks and changes their logo, the way they write Google all the time to feature various events, various uh, happenings in the world. And they use that so effectively and it conveys a very strong message that that brand constantly has and feels the pulse of the world. Just like it's a global search platform, it constantly tells you that it constantly has the pulse of what is happening around the world and is depicted by the way they change their logo depending on the happenings around the world. Constant change and upgrades of product is necessary. You can't sell the same product forever. So you need to constantly change your and upgrade your product, and introduce new features, introduce various things. But every time you do this, the underlying design and philosophy of the brand has to remain relevant and alive. And a brand we talked of, say BMW, they come out with new models all the time. But once you see the model, you know that it is a BMW and only a BMW. Only a BMW will give you that kind of a design. So upgrade yourself, make new product, but always with the underlying design philosophy in place 
and that makes the brand relevant and alive. Brands use design to reach larger audiences and drive social change. Okay, one of the examples is sustainability. How brands have used that to create product that is sustainable, they make that product with an idea of making a difference in our lives. It is a social change. It's a relevant social change. It's the need of the hour today to make the earth more better place to live in. And the use design to make this difference in our lives and sustainability is a great example of that. Study sustainability. I think during my workshop, I talked for nearly one hour on sustainability and how various people have created designs for their brands, which enhance and make people, consumers, more educated and more conscious of the need for sustainability. So going further with brands and designs, brands use design to make a difference in our life. Okay, Apple has done it best when they started the iPhone or the iPod. We didn't imagine that these kind of, we were all used to using the, walk, uh, the walking uh, tape recorders and everything. And the iPod came up with something so small, so unique, okay, that it made our life different, made our life easier. And one of the purposes of a brand and especially when you are conveying things like social sustainability and social change is to make bad better from bad to better, but in a fun and interesting way. It cannot be dull and boring. Then it's not going to catch up and it's not going to take the fancy of the consumer. So one of the aims of the brand should be to make bad better in a fun and interesting way. It should encourage people to change and build awareness. This is very important. Brands have the power. If you are a brand, you have a power to change things. You have a power to make your consumers realize and be aware of certain things. Use that power. Encourage people to change. Encourage people to build awareness. And all this is done by creating designs. You are designing product that offer the consumers the path of least resistance. It has to be the simplest way. And it has to be very simple for a consumer to adapt that in his or her life, which will still improve the life, which will help the world, which will help social, society at large, but for them, it is very easy to adapt and use with easy, usable product design, as we just said. So, what are brands and designs? And to achieve all of this, whatever we talked of, it is achievable. It's not that it is impossible. It's not like you need to be a rocket scientist to develop. But brands will require to change their mindset. I think we've talked about this on various aspects. And... Everything at the end of the day is about changing your mindset to accept and do what is required to get to your goals. Okay, And you will need organizational change. As I said, I have not heard of any company except two where I have been the advisor who have a CDO. Nobody, nobody, even in the industry I was working with, Nobody has a CDO in the real sense. Of course, you know, in the industry that I am concerned with, in India, there are very few brands that really do it. So they may not have felt the need to do it. As I said, the B2B business, uh, uh, this thing, uh, uh, you can do without a CDO if you have a great merchandiser, but you need a CDO. And these steps will help make the brand great. You will go from good to great without any trouble over a period of time. And it will also make the consumer's life better as you do that. And the consumer's experience will be more pleasant and addictive 
and that makes them loyal and coming back to your brand all the time. These are the main thoughts. This is the gist of the uh, workshop I did for the company. I again wish to thank the company. I don't have permission to name them. I, have, I want to thank them for allowing me to do this and I hope you have found it interesting. I hope you use some of these ideas to better create or enhance your brand all through. Thank you very much. Hope you like it. I think I have to, I should have just recorded this message and kept it. Please do like my video. Please do send in your comments. Please do subscribe to my YouTube, LinkedIn and Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, uh, YouTube channel and LinkedIn and Facebook pages. Many thanks in advance. Hope you have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye.